King of Kings, standing together for the Word of God, because He alone is one of our praise. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the Lord our King. He is the Lord our strength. He is the Lord our joy. He is the Lord our sustainer. He is the Lord our God, our defender. Hallelujah! Come on, one more time, Father. We bless you. We bless you, O God. We magnify you, O God. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. He is the Lord, our peace, our joy. Wow, wow. Thank you, choir. Powerful. No matter what happens, he still has our back. No matter what, he is our joy. No matter what, he is our strength. Because guess what? We are still alive. So God might as well be our peace. And he might as well be our joy while we are going through. Hallelujah. We give God the praise, give God the adoration for another year to be able to celebrate with all the women of House of Restoration, GVL, Government Virtuous Ladies. Come on, put your hands together for the King of Kings. We have gathered again together for the last day of our conference team, God our Defender. Hallelujah. Father, we just bless you, O oh God, today. We magnify you. We exalt your holy name. Heavenly Father, Lord, King of glory, we ask, O oh God, that you will speak to every heart in the name of Jesus, that you will open every heart like you open up the heart of Lydia, that you will speak a word of life into us, into our lives, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, that we will not go back home the same way. We ask that you will do that which only you want to do in the name of Jesus. The Bible says where the word of the king is, there is power. And you are the king. As we declare your word this morning, we ask, oh God, that your word will follow. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask that your word will be multiplied over our lives, that your word will increase over our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask, oh God, as we hear your word, it will fix everything that needs to be fixed in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we will not go back home the same way. Your world will change our lives. Your world will transform us, oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, the entrance of your word will give light. In the name of Jesus, and it will give understanding to the simple. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Woo, come on, put those hands together one more time for the King of Kings. Because he alone is worthy of our praise. And we can also do that for ourselves. Put, that, put those hands together for yourself. Because we look great, hallelujah. Without wasting our time, um, the team that God has given to us, I believe, is God, our defender. And we've started um, since when? Since Friday. We had another dose um, yesterday, and today will be the last day. Um, God, our defender. I'll read from the book of Psalm 62 from verses 1 to 2. Psalm 62, 1 to 2 says, if we have it up there, we can display. Psalm 62, from 1 to 2, it says, truly my soul, hang on, let me check my time. Come back. Psalm 62, 1 to 2 says, truly my soul waits for God. From him, comes my salvation. He is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. So we've been talking about God being our defender. And on Friday, we were privileged to listen to our own very dear pastor, Pastor Ebenezer, that, you know, spoke into our lives about God being our defender. And some of the things that he shared that I want to, you know, um, say again, reiterate again is, in um, his message, he said, God as our defender, God will defend you. 
according to Pastor Ebenezer, but you have to trust him. And then he said in his message on Friday that we should not hide, that we cannot hide from someone that will defend us. And he gave a case of a lawyer. Like if you are in trouble, or maybe not you're in trouble, but you, there are some cases that you need a lawyer to represent you because they'll do a better job than you will. He said just in case, in case you need a lawyer, he said you have to, you can't hide from your lawyer. You have to tell him everything. Even if he did wrong, you know, do something bad, you still have to let your lawyer know that you cannot hide anything from him. Because, me speaking now, the lawyer, the defender or the lawyer is there to represent you no matter what. And he said, you have to tell the lawyer the truth. He said, um, our hope must be in God because he's the only one that can save us. He's the only one that can protect us and defend us. God is the only one who can defend us. And because of that, we shall never be defeated. And on Saturday, on yesterday, um, our mother in the Lord, Dickiness Abimbola Uju, she uh, spoke on trusting in the Lord. That if we want God to, for God to be our defender, you have to trust him just in case of a lawyer. If you get a lawyer and you're not telling the truth, that lawyer will not be able to defend you well. The lawyer will not be able to represent you well because the lawyer does not have that full information. So yesterday, we were taught that in order for God to defend us, we have to trust him at all times. We have to trust him in every situation, in whatever situation we are going through, either in the bad time or in the good time, we have to trust him. And today, I want to talk to us about God being a sure defense. Can we say that God, a sure defense? Because we've been talking, we've been mentioning God our defender. Foundation has been laid of what a defender does, who a defender is. And may I tell you that when God represents us, when God is defending us, God is there for us to win the case. In case of a lawyer, the lawyer will still do their best, but sometimes people will win the case. But in God's case, God, when he defends us, he will always win the case. Just like he said, his word said in the book of Psalm 62. Um, the psalmist says, he is, verse 2, he said, he is my defense. That is, God is my defense. He got my back. And because God is my defense, I shall not be moved in any situation. So today I want to talk to us about God being a very sure, a very solid defense. Like we've had it before, like somebody will tell you something, they say, take it to the bank. I guess when you take it to the bank, you definitely have to get money because the bank is where the money is being kept. So our God is a sure defense. And who is a, a defender? A defender is someone who protects, you know, just in the case of a lawyer. They, the lawyer represents your interest. They do everything possible, even if you are a criminal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they know you stole that. Well, not us. Well, let me. They know that person stole that thing. They know that person committed the crime. Because, but because the lawyer is representing that person, they try their best possible to make sure that this person go free. So a defender is someone who protects a place or, in our case, people like us against attack or who believes in and supports a person. So we can say God is our defense and God as a defender protects us from every attack of the enemy, from every situation we might, we might be going through in life. And God believes in us and he supports us. I know Pastor once said one of his message, and I'm not quoting exactly, but I'm paraphrasing. He said, the way men are built, we are not, God didn't build us to really 
I mean, fully handle problems or challenges of life. You know, if there are some things that you've been going through that happen, that's happening in your family, in your life, and you feel like just losing your head. You feel like you can't even bear it anymore. You can't even live anymore. And yesterday, um, Deaconess Ojo also mentioned that God has designed or created us to need help, in other words, to depend upon him. How do I know? Because if you say, oh, I'm rich, I don't need God, this and that, you go to the hospital and say, hey, I want to buy a kidney. You have, they will put you on the waiting list because even the doctor cannot manufacture, the doctor cannot create another kidney from you. They have to take from God's work. So God has created human beings in such a way that we will always depend upon him. We will always need help. Uh, and like I said, God is our defense mechanism. Do we have my slides? He's our defense mechanism. Okay. Moving forward. So I would say that um, a defense mechanism is, you know, just like we described in case of God, a system that um, protects a place or somebody that protects somebody, someone, or somebody that keeps someone's interest. Uh, just like in the basketball, my sons, they play basketball, and I've heard, I'll ask them, okay, what, what, what role do you take in a basketball? And they say, we play a defense role. I'm like, what is a defense role? You guys have my slides so I can show them? No? Oh, right there. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Oh, I couldn't follow. Okay. So they say, oh, they play a defense. You see that offense person? So when you say defense, defense, and you see like in case of somebody holding the basketball, and I think my son, they both do the defense. Because sometimes I'm privileged to go to their game, and then, you know, one of my sons is really tall, and then he's doing this. I'm like, what is he doing? He's doing this. He's doing this. So he's trying to defend the opponent, so they won't score, so they won't win. So it is the same way with God. We can say that that guy that is trying to play that defense person is God. He's protecting your in interest. He's keeping you. Even if you are going through if you trials of life, God is saying, I got you. I'm your defense. I'm your rock. Relax. So defense has to do with protecting something or fighting against an opponent whether it is a national defense or a football team or, like I gave an example, in the case of the basketball. And also, I know it won't surprise you that the United States of America also have their defense system. Because, like I said, when you have a defense system, you, it's like you have something you want to protect. You have something you want to keep. So you need to come up with a system or somebody that can stand in front of what you are trying to keep so the enemy will not get through. So for the United States, I'll mention one of their defense systems. Um, the second one, it said ground-based mid-course defense. And then it says that this system use, uses ground-based interceptor to intercept. So I guess maybe when somebody wants to fight against America, America has a defense system whereby that thing, that GMB will just intercept whatever the enemy is doing. So same thing with God. He's our defense. He's there to shield us. He's there to protect us. Again, Psalm 62, it says, Truly my soul waits silently for God, for from him comes my salvation. He, he only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. And if we jump again to verse 5 of Psalm 62, 5, it says, My soul waits silently for God alone. For my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. 
He is my defense. He's my defense system. He's my defense mechanism. Is God my defender? Therefore, I shall not be moved no matter what. So God is a sure defense. Let me tell you a little bit about him. Isaiah 40, 15. And somebody may say, well, I don't need a defense. I'll, I'll, I, you know, even if you have money, I will show it to you that we need defense. We need God as, we need help. God has created us in, in that way. You know, sometimes maybe you are home, you're not feeling good, or you're just not happy, you're discouraged, and you call somebody. That person, you know, can encourage you. And based on that, you know, you are happy, you're able to get back on your feet. So God has designed us uh, like that. And God is a very sure defense, a solid defense. He is the defense himself. You know, the, for the United States, they created, they put together the defense system. But God himself is the system, is the defender all by himself. The basketball team, they, they may, usually make someone, or maybe one or two, I don't know much about that game, the, 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 that someone to play the defense, you know. But God himself is the defense for our lives, for our home. And I want to tell you this morning that he is a sure defense. He is a sure defense that no matter what you are going through in life, you will say this is just for a season. While I'm going through that tribulation, while I'm going through that problem, just like choir said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. It doesn't mean that the trouble is no longer there. The trouble is still there. Just like you play hide and seek. Most of us did that while we were growing up. I did. You know, hide and seek is like I, I catch Tolu and Toby play with uh, Enoch. They're playing hide and seek. So two of them will go and hide while the other one is looking for them. So while you play that hide and seek, it's like you have somebody, something covering you. That thing that you are hiding behind, we can say that's God. Even though you, you, you may see the people that are looking for you to get you in that hide and seek, or even if you don't see them because you're hiding, you have an idea of where they are. So when you hide and seek, it's like you are still in that trouble. You are facing that tribulation, but God is there to defend you. So God is a sure defense. And I want to tell you that Isaiah uh, 14, well, he's a, he's a short defense. Number one, he only is our rock. Isaiah 32, 1. A short defense, he only is our rock. Isaiah 32, verse 1. It says, Behold, a king will reign in righteousness, and princes will rule with justice. A man will be as a hiding place from the wind and a cover from the tempest. So I'm telling you that God is a sure defense. And then Isaiah 40 from verses 15 to 18. Isaiah 40, 15 to 18 says, Behold, the nations are as a drop in a bucket and are counted as the small dust on the scales. Look, he lifts up the owls as a very little thing. And Lebanon, Lebanon, is not sufficient to burn, nor its beast sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted by him less than nothing and worthless. Verse 18, Isaiah 14, 18 says, To whom then will you liken God? I told you God is a sure defense. Or what likeness will you compare to him? Same Isaiah 40, verse 25 says, To whom then will you liken me? 
or to whom shall be or to whom shall I be equal, says the Lord. So in this case, we can say, among all the kings, every, you know, everyone on the planet, who can we liken to God? The situation you are going through, what? He says, or to whom shall I be equal, says the Holy One. And then if you go to, remember we're talking about God is a sure defense, and I'm telling you that, showing you reason why God is a sure defense. Isaiah 43, 10 and 11 says, You are my witness, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, there was no God formed. Whoa. Before God, there was no God formed. Wow, God, you are great. Mm. Nor shall there be after me. I, even I, I am the Lord. And beside me, there is no Savior. Look at that. Before me, there was no God. Wow, that caught my attention this morning. Like, God, you are powerful. God is a sure defense. He said, before me, there was no God formed. He said, I, even I, I am the Lord. And beside me, there is no Savior. So it is only God that can save us. It is only God that can defend us. God is the only one that is a sure defense that nobody created. And before him, there was no other God. He is God all by himself. A sure defense that is not put together by the United States of America. A sure defense that is not put together by the coaches or the people in a game. He himself is our defense. And he says, I, even I, I'm the Lord, and besides me, there is no Savior in heaven and on earth. God is a sure defense because he is our salvation. Remember we read from the book of um, Psalm 62 where he says, he's my rock, he's my salvation. And because God is our defense, God is our salvation. Truly my soul waits for God. From him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. And because I know that God is my defense, I shall not be greatly moved. Say to someone in Exodus, say, I shall not be greatly moved. I shall not be greatly moved. Because God is my defense. He got me. So I'm, I will not be moved. Also, God is a sure defense because God is our refuge and our strength. If you look at the same um, chapter, verse 22, verse 8, it says, Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. What is a refuge? A refuge is a condition of being safe. Or shelter. So if God says he's a refuge for us, he, 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 he shelters us. He keeps us away. Okay, refuge is a condition of being safe or sheltered from pursuit, danger, or trouble. Because somebody will say, well, why do I need God to defend me? Yes, we need God to defend us from all kinds of trouble, from the attacks of the enemy. So we need him as our strong defense. And he has given us his word that he is our defense. So it's a sure defense because he said he's our refuge and our strength. Okay, moving forward. Okay, still going on on why I said God is a sure defense. If we look at the book of Nahum 1.3, it says, Nahum 1.3, it says, The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not wait at all 
and will not at all acquit the wicked. This one is where I'm going. You know, it said, you know, when we come to church, it's good to listen, you know, get the word of God. I remember one of uh, my husband's friend came and he ministered this word. It's been a long time, and this verse stuck to me ever since, over 10 years. It says, verse 3, reading forward, it says, the Lord has his way in the wild wind and in the storm. And the clouds are the dust of his feet. So our God is a sure defense because he knows his way. He can navigate through whatsoever you think you are going through. Because the Bible says, in the wild wind and in the storm of life, God has his way. He knows what's going through. He knows what is happening. So I want to encourage us as I bring our message to a close that God is our defender. Can you say to someone that God is our defender? I'll be very happy if that's what you get out from the message today. God is our defender and is our defense. And as human beings, God has created us to lean, to get help from him. Very quickly, let me run through this. For God to defend us, we need to trust him. Just like we, I guess Psalm 62 is our text. We read in Psalm 62 verse 8. He said, trust him at all times, you people. All times. Just like we heard from the message yesterday that we need to trust God at all times. Either when you have money or when you don't have money. You know, some days I'm getting old. I don't look, I don't look my age. So some days I wake up, it's like I'm having, you know, yeah, for real. I said, I said, I need to call my sister and say, well, tell me the kind of pillows that you get so I can change all these pillows. Or maybe we need to change this mattress. But there are some days you are like, oh. I remember one day I was at work and I pick up the phone. It was a Nigerian guy. You know, and then I say, it's like, oh, you are so excited. I'm like, mm-hmm. So, you know, that there are some days you're like, yes, let's go. We got this. And there are some days you're like, maybe I need to start working. I've been trying to work since. Maybe I'll do one, two days and then I'll relax. But then I keep telling myself, like, no, I need to, you know. So when you are feeling good, when you are not feeling good, when you are happy and you're, or you're not happy, when you are rich or you're not rich, when you are going through problem or not, the Bible says, Psalm um, 62, 8, trust him when? At all. Remember, he's our defense, our defender. Trust him at all times. So in order for God to, def- to um, defend us, we have to trust him. From the message yesterday, um, Dickness just said, we have to have a relationship with God. You know, you can't just call somebody on the street and say, yo, Give me a thousand dollars. You look at it like what? You know, but if you have a relationship with somebody, you can go like, hey, I don't, I need something, something. Even if they don't have, they will try to give it to you. So she said, we have to have a relationship with him. And that's a way of trusting God. Of course, God is merciful. Um, you know, it causes the rain and the sun to shine upon the good and the bad people. So God is in his sovereignty, he will still do what he wants to do. So for God to defend us, we have to trust him. And the Bible in Psalm 62 is saying we need to pour our hearts before him. You have that slide with the water? You have to pour your hearts before God. Pouring out your heart, same Psalm 62 verse 8, you say pour out your heart. When you pour out your heart before God, it's like sometimes maybe you can't, you, you're not saying anything, but you're just telling him, God, you know, I'm going through this situation. My husband is acting great. My sons are acting this. My job, they, I'm just, ooh. The Bible says, pour out your heart. And when you pour out your heart before him, he will defend you. And then he says, do not trust in man. Look at Psalm 62, 9. He said, don't trust in man. He says, surely men of low degree are a vapor. Men of high degree are a lie. If they are weighed on the scale, they are altogether lighter than than than. So in order for God to defend us, don't put your trust in man. Of course, God can raise up a man to help you. 
but our sole trust should be in God himself. And then do not trust in riches. Someone will say, well, I'm rich. I got money. I don't need God. I don't need God. But you know, there were situations, and I've heard of stories of rich people, very rich, very wealthy. They have money, and they have uh, debilitating uh, disease that cannot be cured, and they die. Their money cannot even save them. So you don't want to trust in riches. You want to trust in God alone. You don't want to trust in riches because the Bible says wealth has wings. Whoops. Yeah. Wealth has wings. Very quickly. I think that's the, in the book of Wealth Developed Wings. Book of 23, 5. Proverbs 23, verse 5. Over. Where are you? 23, 5 says, Will you set your eyes? Uh-uh. Yes. Oh, yeah. He said, will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches, are sat- for riches certainly make themselves wings. So if you say you have money, he said it makes themselves, riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Like our deacon told us, deacon in Olabo today, like, hey, you've got to be on a budget. If you, if you spend, spend. If you have $1,000, you spend, you spend $1. You have $1 less. So the Bible says your riches, your wealth can be gone. You know, you have issues of life. Maybe somebody is sick. You spend money, spend money. So don't trust in wealth because it develops wings. And also do not trust in wealth because the eyes of men are never satisfied. Look at Proverbs 27, 20. Hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of men are never satisfied. We always want, want. Men's wants are insatiable. You, men's wants cannot be satisfied. It's like you get uh, Christian Dior shoes. Mm-hmm. You, you got a Christian Dior shoes like three months ago. And then you say, oh, well, I'm not going to get. And then three, three months later, you say, I want something else. Or you get your Gucci bag. Or you get this very dream house you've been looking for. After five years, you say, oh, I think we need to leave from this house. Or you get a nice clothes. Next year, you'll be like, I don't want these clothes anymore. So you can't trust in riches because men's wants are insatiable. Men are never satisfied. No matter what, no matter what, you still want more and more and more and more and more and more, even if you get the best. So do not trust in riches. So we're going to be bringing this to a close. So my, my uh, assignment here today is to encourage you, just like the choir sang, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Remember, we're still in this world. If you hear a doctor's report, or a child is giving you problem, or your husband is not acting the way you want to, or maybe you hear a bad doctor's report, you still need to be in the right sense of mind. Even if you cry or you do what, whatever that you want to do. Because you are still alive. So you need God as a defense to regulate your mind, to stabilize you, to help you that even when you are going through, you're not losing yourself. We need God as our defense. So I want to encourage somebody today. God is our defender. Truly my soul waits for God. From him comes my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be be greatly moved. So I want to tell you today, I don't know what you are going through. I, I, I have my own issues too. You know, phases of life. There are times nothing is happening and there are times things are happening. And then you can't understand, God, why is this? But I've come here to encourage somebody that if you will trust in God, if you will pour out your heart to God, he says, when you are going through life or the sums of life, maybe you're a student, you don't know if you should be a medical doctor or a pharmacy or this or whatever. When you are going through life or the sums of life, you need God as your defense. You need God as your defender. 
When you are worried about the doctor's report, you know there are some reports you hear, you're like, eh, this one. But when you are worried about the doctor's report, when you are worried about a child or children that are not acting right, when you have concerns about your spouse, about your home, where there seems to be before you a long-standing problem without a way out, a hard thing in your life, something that seems so difficult in your life, when getting, when you, it seems like the right partner is not coming for you, and you're trying to get directions for the Lord, from the Lord. When you're trying to get, uh, can we be on the keyboard, please? When you try to get good grades, I'm sorry, thank you. When you try to get good grades in school, when you're having difficulty breaking a habit over your life or respecting your parents, you want to, when you want to know the next step to take, when you are having emotional and mental distress because of what you are going through, when you need a breakthrough in every areas of life, when you um, need a breakthrough in order to lose or be free from whatsoever thing that you are going through, in, when you need, um, when you are in a situation and in a problem, and you don't want to die in that situation. You know, people can be going through stuff and they think, they think, they have hypertension and they die right in there. They just die. You have to, when you are going through these situations of life, things seem tough. I've had a saying that says, tough situations don't last, but tough people last. When things are not going the way you want it, the, the, the situation seems so difficult and there's no way out. When it seems like you can't go back, you can't go to the front. When it seems like you can't share what you are going through with anyone. When it seems like your home is not in order, I want to tell you that you need to wait on God. You need to tell your soul, soul, wait on God. Look at what Psalm 46 said as I close. It says, God is our refuge, Psalm 46. A very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the heart be removed. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just as the break of the dawn. And then verse 7 says, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob, he is our refuge. My time is over. I need like two more minutes. I want to encourage us this morning. I don't know what you are going through. I want you to raise up your voice. Lift up your voice and call unto God. That God, you are my defender. You are my defense. Please come through for me. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you, O oh God. Let us open up our mouths and pray. Whatever situation you're going through, that difficult situation that you are going through, let us begin to open our mouths and pour our hearts that God will come through for us. God, you will defend me. Thank you. One moment. God, you will defend me in every situation of life. God, I don't understand what is going on around me. I don't understand this doctor's report. Father, I don't want to lose my child to drug. I don't want to lose my home. I don't want to lose my wife. I don't want to lose my husband. Father, it seems like there is no way out. You are my defense. I want to encourage you to open your mouth this morning and begin to pour out.